All right, our first example, we're going to work with uh, an iso isosceles triangle. Um, just a reminder, isosceles triangles, we learned in an earlier unit, have two congruent sides. So the question we're being asked, how are the base angles of an isosceles triangle related? So here's our isosceles triangle, A, B, C, and you can see the two congruent sides. A, B is congruent to B, C, so this makes this an isosceles triangle. So because we have congruent sides, the length was preserved. That means that there is a rigid motion that maps BC onto BA. Um, we have drawn in here an angle bisector. Maybe we'll just make a note that that is an angle bisector. Oh, that's an R bisector is that line right there. Because that's an angle bisector, that means that it created two congruent angles. So angle CBD is congruent to angle ABD. So there's the angles we got from creating, um, drawing in that angle bisector. So Let's think about that angle bisector as a line of reflection. We would just want to take note that if you reflect point B across our line of reflection, you still get point B because it's on the line. A reflection of point D across our line is equal to D. A reflection of BC across this line gives us AB. And because we were told it's an, it was an isosceles triangle, we already know that those two are congruent. So that rigid motion preserved that measure or that length of that side. So because BC is equal to BA, we can conclude that point C reflected across our line will be equal to point A. So essentially what we're concluding here we just did a lot of talking, is that the reflection maps triangle BCD. So BCD is this triangle right there to triangle BAD. So BCD was mapped to BAD. That means that the measure of angle BCA is equal to the measure of angle BAC. And because those, the measure of those angles are equal, we can conclude that the angles are congruent. So BCA is congruent to angle BAC. So in the picture, let's just find those angles BCA is that angle and BAC is this angle. So bottom line, after just kind of reasoning through this, when you have an isosceles triangle, the base angles will also be congruent because of the, because of an angle bisector that you can draw through the vertex. We can see that a rigid motion maps one triangle onto the other triangle, giving us these angles preserving the same measure. So that's going to lead us to our isosceles triangle theorem. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the opposite, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So what that means, if you have a triangle and we're told that two sides are congruent, it's an isosceles triangle now, then the angles opposite those sides. So opposite the side, the angle can't touch this side. This angle or this side is, is touching this angle and this angle. So it has to be the angle opposite. So we'll find those opposite angles of each side and we can conclude that those are congruent. All right, the converse of this, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. 
So the converse just works backwards from the theorem. So you have a triangle. If you start with congruent angles, then you can, con can conclude that the sides opposite each angle will be congruent.